Hello there, everybody, and welcome. This is episode 13 of Rock Hollow, the, the Gift of Shadow. And as you can see, well, we have big problems ahead of us. Apazi the Giantess has come to raid our premises. So, the real interesting part about all that is that we currently have human traders in spot. I will get the people into the burrow because, you know, that's just, in my humble opinion, the smartest thing to do. We have signed them all and Id is hopefully going to get inside before the giantess finds him. He's been already beaten up by a bunch of troglodytes and suffering ever since, so I really hope for the best. And so, let's follow Apazi's movement. I mean, technically, I could just send my soldiers onto her. I think they, they would just take good care of her, but uh, let's see how things will play out. So first, she goes in here. Let's delete all the messages and let's see. So we have spinning silt stones assaulting her. Yeah, well, that's a fractured leg. Looks like giants are way worse at dodging than goblins. So, well, I... I'm I'm very surprised about the the power of rock traps versus a giant. Obviously, this was a brilliant idea and totally fought off the monster. <laughs> well, I mean the the human uh, entourage completed the job, but since nobody got wounded, as far as I can see, at least there's also no diplomatic issue. Let's just say. They gave this beast the the final the final the final blow. The traps pretty much uh, destroyed her ability to move. So, in the meantime, I have modernized my little water trap setup. We have brought up more area for the trickle. As I have discovered in the previous episode, that it's never been about the free space. It's always been about the walls. Usually, the roof does also exude water, but not in this scenario because there is no aquiferous layer above, obviously. If we would be digging here, the roof would also drip water. That's how aquifers work, and that's why they are so confusing, because the topmost layer has different rules than the layers below. Always gets me. So. We also need to uh, pa uh, to to pause the burrow now, as we have averted the threat. It was actually really not much. So I am very happy with the efficiency of our defense system. Right, every dwarven citizen of this place should be as well. So what's happening besides of that? I've been busy. The Department of Beds has assigned beds to all of these apartments. Because, you know, we need more bedrooms. Rockhold is steadily growing. The city hasn't seen pauses in its immigration cycle ever. So we're just going to build the, the empire um, here. The biggest problem that I got is that my room to build on is mostly blocked by aquifer or caverns. Both. So we are pretty much here in a, uh... oh gosh, that's, I'm so stupid. All right, so we'll, let's just, let's just pretend nothing ever happened and uh, just, just, sometimes I just don't realize when I'm ordering floors instead of walls and then I notice that the blueprint on the floor just doesn't look right. Anyways, thing is, we're going to get the blocks invested into the floors back anyway, so it doesn't matter. There's more than enough workers ready, and they won't mind ripping out these few rock blocks for me again. Easy like that. Okay, so that's only a handful of new rooms, obviously. And we will go downstairs in a hot second. As soon as I have ordered all that and the doors for 
the future plans. I need to check whether or not the aquifers are bothering my plans, though. I don't know yet. That's the issue. Okay. But as we see here, these guys are really, really, really vast by now. Okay. Downstairs here. All right. The good news is we don't have any leakage problems in this area. That's very good. So that means we can easily build ourselves a nice little apartment block here. I'm going to do that between the episodes again, as I feel like this is uh, always a pretty egregious task. And I do my planning better off camera. <laughs> More people arrived. You see, uh, there we go again. I just have finished a couple of bedrooms and new arrivals are there. I'm quite happy that the new arrivals came after the giantess has been killed. Rakus the miner! <laughs> well, one Rakus doesn't come alone. So, uh, yeah, Rakus and Rakus are back to carve up some rock here, obviously. Good to have you back, friends. So, by now, a couple of the main cast of the first uh, season are finding their way back to Rockhold. It's working exactly as I would as I was hoping it would. So we have a legendary clothier arriving. Now that's good news. Just what we need. Lots of people in the clothing industry. Catten the pu pump operator. Destot the diagnostician. There's a lot of people that feel vaguely familiar to me. Anyways, I wanted to take a look at Zigun. Rich Cobra. What a sexy name. So... He is a legendary clothier, and we are very, very much welcoming him, because we do have dire need for more clothing. Which brings me to the point where I do want to have more clothiers' workshops down here. Let's put them up here. Okay, wonderful. So, what went with the water project? Ah, brilliant. As you see now, finally, these extra chambers fill up. Evaporation has been stopped. And as soon as all of these chambers are full, we finally will be able to, to get somewhere. So, brings me to the point that I want to continue my endeavors here. I have plans. I just want to produce a lot of water down here. And digging out more of all that is just way to go. Yeah. I've heard that our friends from uh, DF Hack are working currently on GUI overlay updates that'll allow us to ignore damp digging. You see these cancellations that I'm suffering from. I'm really very, very much looking forward to that. An elf bard has shared many tales, so obviously we have elves in our taverns. Should we be worried? I don't think so. As long as they behave, as long as they don't assault my fortress and murder, don't murder any, any cavies inside here, all's gonna be fine. Just don't, don't, don't touch the cavy pores, okay? We are oddly sensitive about that topic. Wait a second, this is not what I wanted to do. And if you don't uh, understand the reference, I deeply recommend watching Firemind. That's where it all happened. Anyways, so with the construction of this, like that, we do provide more walls that drip water for us. So all in all, our entire construction down here should be benefiting from what I'm doing here. Obviously, I'm also making the bridge here a little bit obsolete, but who cares? It's all about getting the water together. All right. But when it's all done, we're going to have a chamber where we can drown all our attackers. I'm looking very much looking forward to that. There we go. So now we got a pretty good water production, I'd say. That should do the trick. Maybe the bridges were unnecessary in the first place, but uh, 
let's just say we have a high-tech compound to make ourselves water. What, what's not cool about that, huh? Anyways, I'm digressing. What I also do need is Gabbro. We really, really, really do need Gabbro. Lots of Gabbro. So it's time to dig up out of the depths of the world. This is a really, really odd thing. There we go. So for this fort, I'm not aiming to gathering any adamantite. I do plan to make adamantite to a uh, main topic for my volcano fort. So just as a heads up, this area here is devoid of metal. And there's always one metal though on the map, the blue one. And we're going to go for that volcano to get ourselves adamantine there. That's going to be the story for that one. I already cooked that up the other day, and I've been very happy with the draft. Hope you like it too. Probably going to be season three. I don't know. Maybe season four. There we go. So we're uh, getting into semi-molten rock. That means we are now on the very deepest levels of our quarry. But Melville or Mayor loves Gapro. And it's the only place where we actually can get Gabro, so we do uh, we, we we happily do provide. So we also find some gemstone down here, which is really good because my stockpiles of gemstone are well absurdly low. Let's put it down like that. I sold away most of them. It's late summer again. I'd love to do some trades as well, but uh, we'll we'll do something about that. Ha. Huh. I have an idea. So we did make some crafts the other um, the other day, and we're going to do more crafts this day. So this fort has a true abundance of siltstone. We are going to be able to provide siltstone for ages, since there's several layers of it. And I'm just I just decided that this is going to be the place where the siltstone will go. So, the crafts dwarves demand a grand guild hall. Well, I I do I do fully understand their desires. So we are going to go for the engraver's way first. As we don't have any heavily decorated uh, furniture available for that purpose. So Let's see what we can do just with uh, the work of our high-quality engravers. So, let's see. Mining-wise, this city is set up grand really well. So, the Rockhousts and Nomal from Sandwalls came here to do their job. We have Zas, our Grandmaster Engraver. So, things are looking quite good. So, let's have a look at Ketten's life. So Ketten Vale Mountain, how's life been to you? Let's first up check out her memories. So satisfaction about learn for learning about surgery. So that's what you do if you are a legendary miner in Rockhold. Pleasure remembering putting on an exception an exceptional item. So Obviously, the new clothing is finding uh, appreciation here on the fort. I like to see that. This is a really, really good piece of news. She communed with Erdem in the autumn of the last year. It's almost, almost a year ago. And a waterfall? Where the heck do we have a waterfall? She learned about paper making and she discussed about a friend's problem. So, Katten, she has a lot of... Uh, people in her acquaintances. She's close friends with the other miners here. And yeah, she's very close with the main cast here. So yeah, her taste is really hard to, uh, uh, is really hard, hard to fulfill. But uh, I'd say Katten has, so, has had so far, as far as the Dwarf of the Day feature goes, a pretty good life and uh, previous time. So let's go for that petition and see. Well, also wanted to check 
How did the Goblinite delivery go? Now that was really it? Two bars? Wow. I probably had too high expectations. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter that much to me. As long as we have some some progress on that end. Speaking about progress, look at that. Ah, beautiful. So I think we can safely flip the switch. And watch our water chamber fully work as intended. Wonderful. So I think the bridges are now no longer necessary at all. Maybe we will make use of these tiny flood chambers at some point in the far-fetched future. But uh, let's try out our system for the very first time, right? Drink numbers are very, very low. So I hope that the next harvest of hel plump helmets is close, but we're going to buy some material to brew with, but I don't know why the farming of this place is somehow working out so badly. So, yeah, well, ah, I see what I did there. I have a monoculture during these seasons, so there's only pigtail growing in these seasons, so my stockpiles here are naturally going low. I did that to myself just didn't realize. So that doesn't matter that much though, because we're just going to live off of imports. It's a perfectly fine method of uh, dealing with that issue. Okay, so I was about to conduct science. So first of all, we need to start pumping the pumps. And this is going to stay a manual operation forevermore because I don't have the 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 urge to automate anything of that you see brilliant it's working out as intended the only question is it'll take a while my pump operators will need a while to extract enough water out of that as you see there parts of the water are stored at an reachable places and the extraction point here is only soaking up part of the water but at the end of the day it doesn't matter that much because if i let that run long enough eventually we'll have that chamber filled nice all right so next step we are going to lock that door again i just want to give it uh a dry run i wanted to say but that's obviously the wrong word wording here so we're we're now shutting the door and as you see there we need to now shut off the pumps and there's some spillage here but the majority of the water is stored there next step oh wait a sec we need to first pump and then open the door the these things, they matter, you see. So, there it goes. Start pumping. This, uh, this pot here needs to be pressurized. There we go. Now we can open the door. Otherwise, we might be losing water, you see. Because if that pot here is not brill, uh, brim filled with water, the water from inside the chamber will drip into that direction and probably fall back into the chamber. I don't know. So, well, one thing shows it ain't enough water as of yet. So we need to fill the we need to fill it up one more time. So, lesson one: don't get impatient. We just need to wait out until the bottom chamber is really full. Otherwise, we probably won't have enough water for the whole mechanism to be filled. Doesn't matter that much. What I do see is a working machinery, and that is really, really important to me. So, one of our, one of our wood burners has been possessed. That's always a tad bit sad, because that means they'll not earn any legendary skills out of that. But, well, it is what it is. I don't mind too much. 
It's early autumn, so there is the next caravan to be expected. So one petition is still outstanding. That means our work in here was not sufficient. Oh, well, I didn't really expect to. So, well, I hope I can get it done without completely messing up the visuals of this place. Currently, we have only art to amp up the Crafts for Skill Hall. The other alternative we could go for would be to put in an artifact on a uh, display, but that always brings the risk of theft. Especially since Rockhold has the policy of all visitors are welcome. That means anybody who's entering the fort has the ability to grab an artifact off a off of a pedestal so eh, not that much to my liking all right or wood burner obviously is creating a legendary piece of clothing out of pigtail and stray billy goat bone okay or, why not and our friends from the mountain home are coming so pigtail braise Wonderful. Appreciate it. So, there is really nothing to talk about on this artifact, sadly. Zavascarol, well, it's only the materials worth talking about because it's uh, 15,000 dwarf books. That's, uh, I just realized that I missed out a few of the latest artifacts. And that toy boat! Seriously! Look at that value! Wow. I... I didn't expect it. Alright, so it's trading time. Sadly, today it'll be harder than ever. So we are going to bring the finished good box. Finished goods box. And let's see what we can trade. Obviously, I'm not going to sell away artifacts, but, uh, well... We're definitely going to go and bring whatever we have available. Okay. Hello there. We're going to stick with the plan. So, let's see. Rose Gold was on the wish list of one of my people. And if I remember correctly, Sterling Silver as well, but I can't remember anymore. Picked Iron also, I think. But, uh, well... Let's not order too much at once. Goblets and fish. Mm, okay. One of my main goals is to go and buy me some food today. Also, very happy to see that the unhappiness is slowly declining. People are, people are good again with life. So, there's Achaea trying to steal things, not getting gobsmacked by my rock traps. So imagine a bird is triggering all that and yeah. Jeez, these birds are annoying. Okay, come on Thob. I'm betrayed. So, Let's see, the guild hall down here, well, looks like the art is almost arting hard enough already. We'll see about the rest. So, we'll need a total of 700-ish bucks to get the job done here. So, obviously, we have enough clothing. Look at that. A city seems to be producing more clothing than it actually needs. Huh. God. This stuff wouldn't be lying around if it wouldn't be needed. Usually people are just uh, putting uh, clothing on directly if uh, wherever it's necessary. So, let's do that metal trade right away. I'm not going to buy any wood from them. Wow, steel, uh, steel sword. But... The tragic about that is 
we we can do better stuff than they do. So not gonna buy subpar qualities here. No, I am after these foodstuffs, which they haven't brought too much, at least not the ones that can be processed into drinks. Jeez, what's wrong with you? That's not what I did expect. Anyways, so let's do a trade, and obviously time for some gifts. So... Let's see. Some of our rock crafts. There it goes. A small token of our appreciation for the metal we were able to buy here. Good thing that we have the the traps here in place. It might be not killing the birds, but it uh, does scare them away. And that is already a pretty big, big benefit for us. So that means rich metal to work with. Very, very happy about that. This is some seriously good news. So let's check back with that area here. So yeah, we are going to dig here. Little expeditionary projects. It's also providing fresh slate for our building projects, so it's a win-win situation. All right. There are again chaos triggering my traps. Well, that does keep my people busy, doesn't it? All right. Sadly, the art wasn't arching hard enough yet, so we're going to apply the last straw. I really hope that it'll work. Because I personally really don't like that. What on earth? Why are you on the tree? How did that happen? I don't care. Not stair mining. We need to construct a stair. What the hell? So let's hope that'll work. Poor fella. Captain, how did you end up on the tree? Tell me. Seriously, I'm curious. This is very, very odd. But I hope that it'll work to, to put a stairwell there. I usually only see NPCs ending up like that. Not my own main protagonists. So, Catton, your life was cool and all until you ended up on a tree. What a what a day what a way to to end today's dwarf of the day feature, huh? Well, so no more stranding. The uh, staircase has held. Jeez, chop that gosh darn tree! It's an obvious liability for security. trees. This is going to be a big problem, by the way, in the long run for the castle construction, because I was taking a bit of a sneak peek preview for myself the other day, checking out how I'm going to build that castle and what and all, and I realized, boy, that's a lot of trees. This place is so full of trees. They grew like crazy. And the thing is, we're living in a Savage Lands biome. That means we chop trees, the animals go crazy nuts on us. So we're going to have some fun times ahead. Anyways, my friends, that is, you might have already noticed, the end of today's video because I started digging out apartments and I promised to do that between the episodes. So 
My good friends, I hope you had some good fun here. I'm very, very happy to see how things are developing. We obviously need to... ...write it completely up. And yeah, new people are arriving. I'm very happy that my water trap is uh, coming together that nicely, and I hope you guys... Leave me some comments, I always love hearing back from you. Ooh, there's a new Forgotten Beast arriving, and yeah. Thumbs up would be appreciated, consider subscribing, check out the description box, there's plenty of Dwarf Fortress to go around, and also my Discord, my Twitch, and Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee. I'd be really happy if you supported the channel, because I love doing what I'm doing, but I also sadly have to pay my bills. And there's also my channel membership system, allowing you to preview all the things that are pre-uploaded. I do a daily episode of Dwarf Fortress, so you might get something you'd like there. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, and thanks for staying around until the end. See you next time. Bye-bye.